welcome class for your project. Let me see where I'm at. On week two for photography two, um, your project is to remove an object. I'm going to make you a tutorial to help you um, see how to do that step by step. Once you know how to do it, it's pretty simple and you're going to be tempted to go back to all your pictures and take people out of them. And I'm not judging you. If that's what you want to do. I will teach you how. So in this tutorial um, that you have an example of, I used one that was already made. Um, this shows you how to remove a car. So you can see there used to be this purple car and now it's not there any longer. All right, this is not that difficult of a of a picture to choose for the example because there isn't a lot of background that's the trick so for you since you're brand new try to cho choose a photograph take a photograph where you have a simple background that you're going to try to remove an object from the more complicated and um, the more items you have in your background the harder it is so I'm going to show you an example of each so let's start with a simple photograph this is a photograph that I took. It's actually, um, I applied a filter called Tilt Shift, which is just something you can do for fun, um, that makes it look like this is a toy or a little uh, toy model. This is an actual photograph that I took off a balcony in Puerto Rico of the beach, so in real life it didn't look like this. So I applied this filter to make it look like a toy or a pretend um, world. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. So what I'm going to do with this photograph, this is a really easy one to choose because I'm going to choose to get rid of these people right here. Those are actually tiny, tiny people walking on the beach. And I'm going to um, just put the sand texture background over them. This is a really easy photograph to demonstrate this with because I have a simple textured background. So if you're starting with this, I would suggest that you choose something like this where you're going to use sand, water, grass sky to remove uh, um, the background behind so if you have a photograph of someone standing and there's only sky behind them for example it's going to be easier than if they're standing in their bedroom with posters on the wall and let me show you how all right to start if you need to you can zoom in if you need to see where you're at and be able to get in closer so let's zoom in a little bit so i can see my tiny people and then the tool that i'm going to choose to remove an object is called the stamp or the clone stamp tool. It's right here, clone stamp tool. It looks like a little rubber stamp. We're going to choose that tool. When I select this tool, I get these options up here where I can choose the brush, size, and I can also choose the opacity. I'm going to leave the opacity at 100. <clears throat> you can lower it a little bit if you want your effect to not be really obvious. I'm going to leave mine at 100 because I want to show you so you can follow along and see the effect. When I remove an object, I'm going to stamp over it, basically. So um, you have different choices. You have hard edge brushes. You have uh, square brushes with hard edges. Or you have these softer brushes with soft edges. Depending on what you're doing, you're going to choose the brush that um, will best fit to that situation. If you choose a hard edged brush, either the square or the circle, you're going to really see the um, outline of the edge when you stamp it. Let me just show you an example. I'm going to choose a really big one just to show you and I can undo this if I don't like it. So let me choose right here um, this large brush. Let me go down a little bit to 70 and I'm going to click on my photo and I immediately got rid of what was behind there because I had um, this blue color selected so I'm going to undo and you can see the hard edge. Okay that's just for an example. Okay to select a background texture that I want to use as my stamp. I'm going to keep on this big hard edge brush just to show you. I'm going to choose um, the Alt. If you're on a PC, you're going to use the Alt and then click button. Since I'm on my um, Mac, I'm actually using the Command or the Mac symbol. It looks like a little four leaf clover. And you click that down and then you right click. Okay, and I just selected this area. That's my, my stamp pattern, basically. Now I can stamp that all over the place. See? You can see those hard edges. And you can see why I might want to not use the hard edge brush. So let's back up, because I actually don't want that. Okay. And now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to choose a soft edge brush, because that it blends in a little bit better. It's a better idea. So I'm going to choose maybe a size 30, which is kind of small. Maybe I'll go to a 50 because I can do these 
these people all in one piece. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to find an area of the sand around them that I want to choose to stamp. If where they're standing is a little bit darker or lighter than over here, you want to pay attention to that. So you want to try to find an area of the background that is closest to the value behind them and that texture behind them because you want to make it look like they weren't even there. So I'm actually going to come right below them to start and I'm going to click my four leaf clover button on the Mac on the PC use your alt button and I'm going to click one time so I'm holding both buttons down at the same time and then I'm going to let go. So what I've done is I loaded that onto my brush so now my brush will look like this. I can paint that pattern anywhere I want. So let me just move up to where the people are. I'm going to click once and you can see they're already disappearing into the sand covering them with sand. I'm using a soft edge brush so it blends in a little bit better. I'm going to do it again and again. and You can kind of see that same pattern is repeating. Sand is really easy to do this on. Grass, water, ocean, and sky, clouds. These are really easy for you so I would really strongly suggest that you take a photograph like that to remove your object from if you're a beginner. Now let's say I don't like that pattern, it's a little too obvious, so I can kind of go over it again. I'm going to select a different area and maybe stamp that a little bit so maybe you don't see it. You can kind of tell. I can keep going over this as many times as I want. I can choose different size brushes to try to make it look a little bit better. You don't want to be too obvious. Maybe I'll choose a larger brush so you can see what that would look like with that piece. It looks a little better. Okay, so that was an example. You're done, so you would save it. Go to File, Save Image, and then you will turn it into Submissions. Turn in to me the original photograph, and turn in to me the one where you remove the object. And the best example of how you do the assignment, assignment successfully is that I can't tell where it came from. So if I look at this, I shouldn't be able to automatically tell where you remove the object. That's the test. So you can test it by showing people, your, your friends or your family, and asking them if they can tell where you remove the object. Okay, and if it's too obvious, then you can keep going over it and blending in. All right, let me move to show you an example of what a more difficult challenge would be, a harder image to use to um, remove an object from. Okay, so this would be a very difficult image for me to remove an object from, um, depending on what I choose. Some things would be a little easier than others. So I'm choosing this to show you a challenge. And I actually already did this. I removed this planter right here. I don't have anything against that planter. I just decided I didn't want it. So the first step, I'm going to do zoom in a little closer so I can see what I'm doing. And get up in there. And maybe one more. Move up a little bit bigger. Okay. And I'm going to move over to this corner. All right. This image is kind of old. And when I enlarge it you can see it pixelate. Pixelate is when you see all those little blurred edges. That's the pixels. I don't it's not a very high pixel photograph. So when I enlarge it I can see all of these um, it, you can start to see all the pixels individually. When I zoom back out it looks fine. So alright here you can also see the pixelation. I'm going to show you some examples of how I remove this planter and then I'll show you the final image because it actually takes a long time if you're going to do this well. So we're going to go back up and choose the stamp button and obviously right off the bat that's too large, way too big, so I'm going to zoom down to, let's go to like a 30. Okay, and then I'm going to click this concrete. Let's get rid of the base of this planter right away. So I'm going to use my either Alt or um, Command button to select. Now I loaded my palette with this gray concrete and I'm going to start clicking over the pl planner. Pretty simple to start. This is pretty easy. It's going to get hard when I get up here. This is going to get complicated. So I'm going to stamp this grass pattern behind there. So I'm going to come up a little bit higher and then I'll be able to stamp on top. So that looks kind of bad if you ask me. So I would come back in and try to clean that up a little bit. Maybe get a bigger brush and load it and go over this a few times so you don't see all those little tiny brush um, brush strokes. Obvious signs that somebody's removed an object. 
If you do this a few times, you're going to start becoming an expert to seeing photographs on the internet and seeing if someone's photoshopped them or not. This is a really easy way to tell if you can see that uneven brushes. So it looks like someone has played around with it in Photoshop. So you'll have that skill. All right, now I'm going to zoom down to a smaller size brush and I'm going to show you what it's going to look like to put this grass pattern over the concrete and this is where it's going to get harder so I'm going to have to switch and then I'm going to put this red wall back here so it's going to get tricky. So I have my stamp, I'm going to load my brush, let's load it right around here where it's got the grass, a little bit of the dark value of the grass where it meets the concrete and I'm going to load that selection and I'm going to come over here and start stamping it and I'm going to try to do it in a straight line so that it looks like the sidewalk continues. Okay, looks a little funky doesn't it? So then I'm going to try to clean that up, come in here and choose some different values just to mix it up and go over that a few times so it looks better. Okay, and then I would continue that grass to get rid of the planter and the red wall. Go slowly, carefully, keep going back over it and um, test it. Zoom out and see if you can tell. So right now I'm actually going to, let's zoom out a little bit. Um, just to give you an idea how it looks a little farther away. I know it still looks funny because the planter is still there, but you're just looking at this part right here from here down. You can start to see that it looks like I could trick somebody. They would never know that planner was there. But let me show you. I'm going to skip ahead to um, show you the completed example that I already did. Remove an object of this image. Okay, there it is. So I already got fancy and put in some different um, flowers that I borrowed from over here and tried to make it look like that planner the planter was never there. So there it is gone. There it is when it was still there. So you can compare the two. This is a, a much more difficult photograph, the one with the planter. I recommend again that you choose a simpler one if you're a beginner. Something like this with a simple texture so you never know what was there behind. If you want a challenge, then you can choose something with a little bit more of a cluttered background. Alright, good luck and thank you for listening.